On nights when you feel like you have absolutely nothing to wear, Style Up is the perfect solution. Style Up is a fashion lifestyle discovery app created to make shopping your favorite influencers looks easy and accessible, while also providing creators the ability to monetize their content. Creators upload looks with direct links to each item that is pictured while shoppers discover new pieces while scrolling through their feed. Style Up pays each creator a percent based on the amount of discovers they receive each day. Post, discover, earn. It's that simple. The app is currently in beta, but is available in the App Store. To get exclusive access, head to at StyleUpApp on Instagram. To register as a shopper, DM the word shopper. And to register as a creator, DM the word influence. Hey guys, I'm Christina Harris, otherwise known as Beauty Chicky, and I'm a content creator and podcaster living in New York City. Yeah, so this is Gregory's, my favorite coffee spot in the city. I've been going here since my freshman year of college. Oh, can I get a medium solo boy? Mm -hmm. I'll get the same thing. Awesome. Cheers, I wanna try this coffee drink. Oh my God. So good. So you're a coffee lover addict? Absolutely. Oh As am I, I completely agree with you on that. So we have that yeah. in common. Um, so I wanted to, you know, get coffee with you and learn a little of bit course. more about what you do on a day to day. You are an influencer, but you're also an entrepreneur and you have a podcast. You have been at this for a long time. Yeah. So can you take <laughs> us back to when you started Beauty Chicky? Yeah, oh my gosh. All right, I started Beauty Chicky in 2011, I believe. So it's been a very long time. Over 10 years ago. Yeah, I know. It's like I've almost, have I? Yeah, I have been on the platform, on all platforms for like a decade, I believe. Wow. Which is crazy. I was way too young to be on the platform when I started. I was literally like 11 or 12 years old, and I'm pretty sure you have to be like 13 to be on those platforms. Oh but like, gosh. I didn't really care. Um, my inspiration at the time was Michelle Fawn. I don't know if you remember her or not. She is like, was OG, she a YouTuber? Like yes. OG YouTuber? Okay. OG beauty YouTuber. Oh, she okay. is a queen. I still follow her to this day, but she was a huge inspiration for me. I love your videos and then one day I was like I'm just gonna start creating them on my own and just see what happens so started just making little you know makeup tutorials hair tutorials uh, how to style items and everything on my channel um, and that's where everything kind of just took off from there I never really had like a well, I had like one viral video, but I wouldn't necessarily say it was the one that like blew me up. I think I had right. a pretty like natural steady growth. Yeah, steady growth. Okay. You have a podcast now. It's called Gin yes. and Toxic. Is this your first podcast or have you done like multiple? No. So I launched a podcast March of 2020 called the Really Bitchy Podcast, okay. which was a playoff of my merchandise line called Bitchy. And the show was, it was a solo show with only me and obviously march of 2020 launching was not my best not idea timing, not great timing um, but yeah but i mean the podcast was good for a while and it was kind of a similar concept to gin and toxic where it was just kind of like stories of things that i've been through and things that i've done and just kind of like my everyday life sort of interacting with people um but the only thing is is that during that time the year of 2020 i went through a lot of life changes um, obviously pandemic being one of them really made me like hone in and kind of look at myself because we're you know really like, stuck in our houses we have yeah. nothing else to do but yeah. focus on ourselves um, so kind of looked at what I was doing with my career and because I was doing the show solo it's very hard to bounce ideas off of yourself, yourself. Yeah. yeah you yeah. can't bounce ideas <laughs> yeah um, so it was really hard when I had to like tell stories or talk about certain topics and I had nobody to like hold the conversation with me. Right. I was only the one holding the conversation. And most, the reality of it is, is most good podcasts have a co-host. Right. You know, there's some people that make it into the podcasting world without a co-host and whatnot, and good for them. It was not for me. I need somebody that matches my energy. Mm -hmm. So the Really Bitchy Podcast didn't do as, well, I wouldn't say it didn't do as well as I hoped, because it did well, but I just personally wasn't yeah, you passionate weren't about feeling it. Yeah. like it was worthwhile. Exactly. It went from me doing it like weekly to me doing it monthly to me doing it like once every three months because I just never had the motivation to record an episode. Mm -hmm. But it sucked because I 
loved podcasting. I absolutely yeah. love podcasting. My manager made a joke with me when I first started podcasting. And he was like, you talk so much. I don't know why you don't have a podcast. Right, right. He's, he's right. I do talk a yeah, lot. Yeah. I tend to talk a lot about a lot of random shit. So, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, you know, you're totally right. But uh, yeah, so I decided finally to retire the Really Bitchy podcast. And then that's kind of what brought us into Gin and Toxic because I knew that I still wanted to do podcasting, but I needed a co-host. Right. Um, I really wanted a co-host and I was like, who is gonna start this new show with me where I'm gonna be able to be even more vulnerable and open and crazy on the show, but I need somebody that matches that energy with me. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my absolute best friend, Lily. It was like a no-brainer that she should be my co-host. And when I pitched the idea to her, she was like, oh my God, absolutely. I love this story like, that's like, she basically sent you an audio note of like a story and, yeah. and it was like, Oh wait, this should be on a podcast? Yeah, she basically, you know what it was, is we were already like thinking about doing the podcast, but we were trying to come up with a name for it. We were like, okay, if we're gonna do this, we need like a really good name. We kind of let go of the idea of the podcast for a few months because we were so stuck on the name. Um, and then one day over the summer, I was in Pennsylvania with my family. And me and my family were at a bar and I was drinking a gin and tonic and I get a voice memo from Lily and she was at this beach and she's like, oh my God, I gotta tell you this story about blah, blah. She's like, this is so toxic of me, but like here it goes. And she's telling me some crazy story while she was like on the beach, like nannying these kids that she nannies for. She's like, oh my God, blah, blah, telling me this whole thing. Um, and she was like, oh my God, that was so toxic, whatever. And then I ended up texting or I think it was one of us texted and was like, we should use Toxic in the name of the show. If we're gonna still do this podcast, we should use Toxic because that would be really great and very on brand for all the crazy shit that we do. Right. And then we were going back and forth, trying to do wordplay with a bunch of different things. And I was in the middle of, I was literally in the middle of drinking a gin and tonic. And then originally I typed, like I literally just typed down, like what if we use like a uh, wordplay with some sort of alcohol? And then I was like gin and tonic. And then I was like, Wait, what about gin and toxic? Thing? Obviously, at under the influence, we like a play on alcohol terms. Yeah, <laughs> being under the influence, of gin and toxic. <laughs> so that's really awesome though, because it came about so naturally. And yeah, like it kind of is a testament to like how well you two work together and right. how creative you two can be. Exactly, and it's such a good co like concept and podcast and you guys have yeah. such good energy as best friends oh, so yeah, i feel like that's you. ideal yeah no um, definitely we have a naturally chaotic energy together brunette and a redhead running around right. new york so right what has been your favorite medium to create content in pot whether it's like a podcast youtube instagram you've done it all yeah so what is your favorite to work with definitely podcasting easily um i've done youtube for the longest um, but you know, YouTube was very fun for a while, but then after a while you get burnt out mm -hmm. and I wasn't really feeling too passionate about YouTube. But then when I picked up on podcasting, like podcasting is just so natural for me because I just get to talk and tell these stories and there's no like crazy cuts in the middle of it. And mm -hmm. you know, and it just feels the most natural to me because I'm such a storyteller. Um, so I think out of like, every platform and definitely be podcasting because I love just like picking up a mic and being like, here's this thing that happened to me today. Here's this horrible day that right. I went on or blah, or like right. some shit. And it's like awesome that. that you've created a podcast that can be like an outlet rather yeah. than like something you have to like scrape really hard to find content for. Yeah, definitely. I know like some people, obviously they have like podcasts where, you know, like the murder mystery podcast where they have to have a story every single and research episode. and a yeah, script. And exactly. And that's super cool. Props to them. But for me, I just like, I think I just deal with and do a lot of crazy shit in a week. Yeah. And I think I'm able to tell like a fresh story. So yeah, it's just like, I talk about whatever the hell comes to mind and somehow it all comes together in the end. And I just, I like love that. It's like just sharing my everyday life and my stories. So yeah. Awesome. You went to FIT. Did you finish school at FIT or did you? Uh, yes and no. Okay. Um, so FIT has 
a really interesting structure, which is where when you're applying your, you know, to go into it your freshman year, you're technically only applying for your associate's degree. Once you get your associate's degree after two years there, you have to reapply in order to get into the bachelor's program. Oh, interesting. And, yeah, it's super weird. You can't just apply for a four year degree there, hmm. which ended up working out though to my benefit because what ended up happening is I went to FIT for two years lovely school my experience there was absolutely incredible wouldn't trade it for the world um, but then after my sophomore year is when things in the social media field started to get like really serious and totally truthful I never wanted to be the girl that like dropped out of school to pursue social media because I feel like it is like a really big cliche yeah but um, what I started to realize after talking to like my manager my dad people that are close to me and you know, all these people were telling me, you're so young and you have this incredible social media or social media career that's, you know, making you really happy, it's lucrative, and social media changes day to day. Like you don't know if you're gonna be relevant one day and then completely irrelevant the next. So mm -hmm. you might as well benefit on it while you can. Right. And right. I was like, you know what, that's really true. Well, thank you so much for bringing me to Gregory's, your morning coffee of spot. And Maybe it'll become yours now. Yeah, no, it definitely will be. <laughs> I will be getting this amazing, I almost just called it a cocktail, La latte situation. <laughs> That's for later. <laughs> That's for later. So with that, we're going to leave now. We're going to go do our respective jobs, and I will see you later for Total a little drink. I'm excited. All right, see you later. See you later. <laughs>to your favorite coffee shop this morning yes Gregory's, and it was so good my latte was amazing of course fall out fall oat boy fall oat boy fall oat oh boy. boy yes there's no apple in it despite my guess <laughs> but it was amazing and we talked about gin and toxic mm -hmm. so now i want to dive into some of your other ventures you have a talent agency called west 27th street west 27 talent or west the full name of it is west 27th talent management okay i call it west 27 talent got it yeah. love it okay so can you tell us a little bit more about west 27 how yeah. it got started mm -hmm. and what exactly it is yeah totally i mean when i graduated from fit well first of all the whole reason i went to fit in the first place and got the communications degree that I did is because you know social media I love it but it's so temporary I was kind of talking about this earlier where I said um that you could be relevant one day and you could be irrelevant the next but I've had years of experience in the social media field and one thing that I'm really great at is negotiating um, I love to negotiate and I love like the business side of things and I always knew that I want to stay in the social media field even if I'm not necessarily the influencer. So I wanted to open up a influencer talent agency basically using like all of my knowledge being this influencer and having all these connections to help other upcoming influencers score brand deals and work with their favorite companies and whatnot. Um, and I originally got my start. <laughs> I got my start with my ex-boyfriend's little sister. Oh. Yeah, no, so she started to grow on social media a lot and wanted to start getting into the brand deal space and growing, you know, her image and everything. So I was like, well, I have this degree and I'm not using it, so let me try it out. We set up like a little email together and I started scoring her brand deals and then after that it was kind of like I want to do this like already I wanted to you know be a talent manager um, and then word of mouth kind of spread she was like telling her friends Christina's doing this for me and getting me these deals and whatnot so then after about a year of doing it just kind of solo for her I decided it was probably like time to file for the LLC open up the company like fully and take in more clients and yeah it's kind of how I got its start and it's been like growing ever since what would you say is like the skill set that most influencers lack the most? Like that they need to be taught how to do that you feel that you offer as an agency? Hmm. I think that 
You know, I feel like a lot of influencers don't realize their worth sometimes, especially nowadays, like, Influencers are, you know, like you see less and less in a way of like celebrities on advertisements, you know, especially advertising things to Gen Z and you see a lot more of influencers because they have that authentic feel to them. Right. And I think that some influencers, especially when they're getting started in the space, just like I was, like I didn't realize kind of like my worth and what I should be charging for things and who I should be working with. And, you know, influencers are the new it thing. They are the faces of so many things and all these brands want to work with them. And I feel like, especially if you're an influencer that kind of took off um, really suddenly, you might lose sight of your worth and not be, you know, getting the, income and getting the brand deals that you should right so i feel like having a little bit of guidance in that would be i know i would have really appreciated that yeah, when i, mean, I was no younger in the space right yeah like, exactly that's the thing it's hard to explain because there is no like guide to being an influencer right but i do think that sometimes because of like the stigma that's around influencers they could be overlooked and lowballed a little bit mm -hmm. and i think it's really you know, worth it to take the time out and really figure out your worth as an influencer and what you could offer because odds are you could offer way more than and receive way more than you're getting. Right. And I want to talk about, you said the stigma around influencers. I feel very passionately and, about Right. <laughs> and you know, the name gets a bad rap, but mm -hmm. it's such, and I say this all the time, I will say it a million more times. Yeah. It's such a grind to be successful as an influencer and you like, constantly have to be creative yeah and you know you're your own boss which is great but it's a challenge oh yeah so what would you say around that stigma yeah i mean the stigma is you know what it's changed a lot uh in both great ways and bad ways because when i was doing social media when i was in high school it was not nearly as accepted as it is now when i was an influencer in high school people looked at me as like the weird girl like that's super weird like i got bullied a lot for like doing youtube and whatnot but now I feel like if you ask any high schooler like what they want to be when they grow up, a lot of them are going to tell you that they want to be an influencer, which is crazy because I'm like, where was that energy when I was in high school? But right. it saved me a lot. Exactly. Like, you know, the whole stigma around influencers is people naturally tend to think that like they're like these entitled people and superficial. Yeah, superficial people. Yeah. You know, flexing what they got online and whatnot and. I think it just it depends on the person honestly right. like I used to have like a way bigger issue calling myself an influencer when it wasn't as accepted as it is now mm -hmm. but now when I tell people that I you know am an influencer as my full-time job they take it more seriously but had it been like five years ago and I'm like yeah I'm an influencer they'd be like right. okay but what's your real job yeah I'm like that is well, my exactly. real job, that is like, job. What do you very mean? lucrative yeah exactly but, and you know the funny thing is and I was talking to someone else about this recently is that for the longest time, there wasn't really a word. Like, influencer wasn't as, like, widely used. Like, a lot yeah. of people said bloggers and, like, yeah. YouTuber, Instagrammer. Mm -hmm. Like, I think the word influ influencer came about almost in a negative way, but now yeah. it's evolved into just encompassing all these content creators yeah. that, you know, have made such a genuine presence. Exactly. And I think TikTok has kind of brought people back to their roots a little bit more. Yeah, you can't definitely. edit personality. So in terms of letting your personality shine through and being authentic and genuine, you created Beauty Chicky and then you created Bitchy, mm -hmm. which is your clothing brand yeah. and is on your necklace. Yes. Um, <laughs> but can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so Bitchy was created because I've tried releasing merch lines in the past that were just like the generic like Beauty Chicky on a t-shirt and they don't do well sounds like a good idea when you're first starting off they never do well and I want to create a merch line that was number one actually wearable like looked like streetwear and mm -hmm. was good but then also something that was like very empowering people could wear it and just kind of like feel like a total badass in a way my audience has always been called the chickies uh, but then when I released a bitchy I started calling them my bitchies mm -hmm. and I think that I've had like this huge evolution and sometimes I still call them chickies to stick to the roots sometimes I call them bitches like it really depends but I'm glad that I have the two and I have evolved evolved a lot since beauty tricky I mean we talked about it earlier I started that like in back in like 2011 obviously I was I was not the same bitch that I was back right. then as I am right. now yeah. so yeah but amazing mm -hmm. and it shows like I love that you said that you um 
didn't want to just put your name on a yeah. t-shirt and sell that because I think it creates such like more of that genuine authenticity yeah when you like put a lot of thought and heart into it so oh yeah awesome. definitely totally what have been some of your favorite brands to work with definitely Fabletics right off the bat I've been working with Fabletics for like three years now and they have been the most incredible company to work with I love everything they stand for. They're all about empowering women also. And they have just been absolutely incredible. The clothing is great quality. Great clothing. Yeah, I genuinely wear like exclusively bitchy and Fabletics and Aritzia. Okay, yes. <laughs> I can't forget Aritzia. Yes. But yeah, no, basically Fabletics like in my day-to-day -day life all the time because I am a big athleisure girl. Like, okay. cause I work from home. I like right. stay home and yeah. do a lot of work. So I'm always wearing athleisure, but they've been absolutely incredible and then also so in recent times, I've been working with Neutrogena, being a person that suffered from like really bad cystic acne, especially through my college years. Um, I really love their products. They work for me, and I love being able to, you know, share them with my younger audience and teach them about skincare and all the products. So yeah, definitely those two brands have been like my top ones that have just been like absolutely incredible over the years. Both awesome brands. Yeah. I mean, Neutrogena is like a classic. Like I feel like exactly. they've always known how to like tap into like what's cool. Like right. who is your celebrity crush? <laughs> you know what? Uh, my guy crush is currently, I'm on the bandwagon with all the girls right now, Jack Harlow. What's poppin'? Who are you? Brand I've new. been on okay, a Jack Harlow kick. Okay. I just got on the bandwagon. I just got on it. I, like, for the longest time, I don't see it. I don't see it. Got in a hole on TikTok one morning. Yeah. And I was like, the oh, Jack no, Harlow I'm hole. there. Oh, yeah. I've, I've gotten there now. I know. I, I am also it. on Jack Harlow TikTok. It's so funny. I'm on, uh, I could pull Jack Harlow TikTok, where, like, all the girls are like, Jack Harlow wasn't famous, I can definitely pull him. And it got right. me thinking, I'm like, right. if I went to a Jack Harlow concert front row, front row, front row, I could pull him, maybe, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. Who's yes. your female celebrity crush? Yes, I was gonna say this, Dakota Johnson, without a doubt. Oh, I see I some like resemblance her. between you guys. Too. Really? Yeah, maybe it's just oh like my God. Hair. Maybe, I don't know, but. I love her though. I think she has just like a, like a beautiful like aura and like presence. Yeah. Like I feel like wherever she walks, she brings like grace. Like and she's very like not soft spoken, but like in the way she speaks, it's purposeful. Yeah. But it's not like yelling. And as someone who like blurts everything out, I Me can too. appreciate that. Right. You know? Exactly. And she's just the thoughtfulness like, in her words. Yeah. She's just like such like an effortless woman. Yeah. Like you just and see her in the gorgeous. street, and she's and just she gets great. To be Chris Martin, which is yes, as well. beautiful. So. Um, so, with all that being said, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Oh my gosh, I get this question all the time, and I have no idea, honestly. Like, typical, you can't predict the future. Yeah. However, um, you know, in 10 years, I will be 32, and so I... 21 years into Beauty Chicky. Right, 21 years Beauty into Chitty Beauty Chicky. Beauty Chicky drink. Right, her. exactly. Right, she's, she's been drinking. <laughs> she's been drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think, re like, realistically, um, I see myself doing, like, my talent agency, definitely, my talent management group. Um, I see that being, like, my most sustainable thing. Um, in a perfect world, I would love to continue Gin and Toxic. If that is still going on in 10 years, I will be highly impressed, number one. And B, that would just be like absolutely incredible because I have all these like stories that I would have told since my 20s. Right. Um, but I do and think still be like, working with your best friend. Right, still be working with my best friend, probably be like married and vacationing in Cabo, who knows. Love but it. like, yeah, I, <laughs> I, ideally in 10 years, um, I think I'm still gonna be in New York City. I don't see myself leaving here. Okay. Um, I think I will still be living here. And if anything, out of all my things, probably uh, career-wise, just building West 27, having it at like its peak greatness, I guess, at the time. So that's where I hope I'm at. And I hope I have a cute dog too. Oh, <laughs> Yes, that's an easy addition. <laughs> right, easy right. Addition. All right, well, thank you so much for coming on. Yes, thank you. Cheers, Cheers to Gin and Toxic and <laughs> everything. And this has been so much fun. 